In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries as we celebrate the feast of St. Columban. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and <clears throat> bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who in St. Columban wonderfully joined the work of evangelization to zeal for the monastic life, Grant, we pray, that through his intercession and example, we may strive to seek you above all things and to bring increase to your faithful people through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the first book of Maccabees. The commissioners of King Antiochus, who were enforcing the apostate, came to the town of Modane to make the Israelites sacrifice. Many Israelites gathered round them, but Matathias and his sons drew apart. The king's commissioners then addressed Matathias as follows. You are a respected leader a great man in this town. You have sons and brothers to support you. Be the first to step forward and conform to the king's decree, as all the nations have done, and the leaders of Judah and the survivors in Jerusalem. You and your sons shall be reckoned among the friends of the king. You and your sons shall be honored with gold and silver and many presents. Raising his voice, Matathias retorted, Even if every nation living in the king's dominance obeys him, each forsaking its ancestral religion to conform to his decrees, I, my sons and my brothers, will still follow the covenant of our ancestors. Heaven preserve us from forsaking the law and its observances. As for the king's orders, we will not follow them. We will not swear, swear from our own religion, either to right or left. As he finished speaking, a Jew came forward in the sight of all to offer sacrifice on the altar in Modin, as the royal edict required. When Matathias saw this, he was fired with zeal. Stirred to the depth of his being, he gave vent to his legitimate anger, threw himself on the man and slaughtered him on the altar. At the same time, he killed the king's commissioner, who was there to enforce the sacrifice, and tore down the altar. In his seal for the law, he acted as Phinehas did against Simri, son of Salu. Then Matathias went through the town, shouting at the top of his voice, Let everyone who has a fervor for, our, for the law and takes his stand on the covenant come out and follow me. Then he fled with his sons into the hills, leaving all their possessions behind in the town. At this many who were concerned for virtue 
and justice went down to the desert and stayed there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will show God's salvation to the upright. I will show God's salvation to the upright. The God of gods, the Lord, has spoken and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of science, perfect beauty, he shines. God's salvation to the upright. Summon before me my people who made covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens proclaim his justice, for he, God, is the judge. I will show God's salvation to the upright. Pay your sacrifice of thanksgiving to God and render him your votive offerings. Call on me in the day of distress. I will free you and you shall honor me. Let us stand for the gospel acclamation. <coughs> uh, <coughs> Let your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus drew near Jerusalem and came in sight of the city, he shed tears over it and said, If you in your turn had only understood on this day the message of peace, but alas, it is hidden from your eyes. Yes, a time is coming when your enemies will raise fortifications all round you, when they will encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you and your children inside your walls to the ground. They will not leave you one not leave one stone standing within another, and all because you did not recognise your opportunity when God offered it. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When Pope Gregory the Great thought about England. He thought, who will I send to preach to the people of this country? What was remarkable was not the individual who came, or that was pretty good, was the group this individual belonged to. He sent monks. He sent monks. And the first thing that St. Augustine did in Canterbury was to build a monastery. Now, when Augustine arrived in England, England as such didn't exist. It was small territories, small kingdoms all over the place. And in the north of England, monks had already arrived. They were Irish monks. And they came, like most monks, to remote places. They came to islands. If you go to Coldy Island off the west coast of Wales, <clears throat> there is the monastery, the modern monastery there, but there is an ancient monastery there, right in the middle of the island, that goes back to about the 6th century. So the Irish monks had already come to different parts of the kingdom. So the very fact that monks are associated with evangelization seems a bit contradictory because you think monks, will they stay in their monastery? Yet the message is very clear. All evangelization must be based on prayer, on the witness of the worship of God. Gregory said to Augustine, What you will find when you go to England is you'll find pagan shrines. In other words, people were already worshipping. 
They worshipped the sky and the sea. They worshipped animals. They worshipped all sorts of things. And Augustine said, as St. Paul has said when he was in Athens at the tomb of the unknown God, he said, let me tell you who it is you are seeking to worship. In other words, there were things they were worshipping, but he said it's not a thing, it's a person. It's the Son of God. The witness to that always has to be based on prayer, because prayer is a relationship with the one that we worship. If we worship without love, our prayer becomes stale, it doesn't change us. To worship because we love is what passes the faith on to others. The early Christians, it was said of them, see how these Christians love each other. It was a question in their love that raised in the life of the people who saw them. So when the monks came to evangelize, they saw this life of prayer. They saw a community of men or women who came together and were witnesses to the love of God. A very short distance from here was one of the most famous monasteries in the country. From this monastery, so much came. And it was the monastery of Barking, Barking Abbey. Some of the ruins are still there. But Barking Abbey was not a monastery of men, it was a monastery of women. And the abbess, who was a legend, St. Ethelberga, a great old Saxon name, the witness to the love of God in these settlements, from there the faith spread. From the witness of the monks, from the service of the monks and the rule of St. Benedict that says, whenever someone comes to your door in need, always help them. In the rule of Benedict, it's called hospitality. From the word hospitality comes the word hospital. From the word hospitality comes the word hotel, comes the word hospice. In other words, places for those people who are in need. And all this comes, has its roots in the monastic life. From the monasteries and the care of the local people, the monks built small priories. And these grew into places that were called minsters. And so the minster in our country was a place that had a particular responsibility under a prior. And the name of the area of looked after by the minster, the name of the area was the parochia. And from the parochia comes the word parochial, comes the parish. The roots of our parish, here or wherever, was in the monastic settlements that went back hundreds and hundreds of years. Why? Because all evangelization has its roots in prayer. Here are you today, following in the tradition of the monks. You are at prayer. You pray for the people. You pray for your families. You experience that love of God through the Eucharist and through the sacraments and the word of God. And from this parochial centre of St. Michael's, you witness, as the ancient monks witnessed and the ancient nuns witnessed, to the love of God, that all prayer changes us. It changes us so that we can love So that prayer comes alive through our love of God and this love we wish to share with others. From the monastery comes the minister, comes 
<coughs> the minster. From the minster comes the parochia. And from the parochia, we have what we have today. St. Michael's Parish, East Ham. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given, human hands have made, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Pray, <coughs> my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer, Almighty God, on the feast day of Blessed Columba, and grant that we who celebrate the mystery of the Lord's Passion may imitate what we now do through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvellous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, Again he gave you thanks and praise, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. And protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings of peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. Thank you. 
Christ. The body of 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 Christ. The blessing of Christ. Let us pray. By the power of this mystery, O Lord, confirm your servants in the true faith, that they may everywhere profess in word and deed the faith for which blessed Columba never ceased to labour and for which he spent his whole life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be merciful as your Heavenly Father is merciful. Go in peace.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine.